currently waiting for the REA to come and rescue me. I have a flat battery. I have this time left my lights on. There's been multiple times on the farm that I have had to charge my battery to get going and I am currently at the shops so I couldn't do that this time. <laughs> But this month we got busy in the garden. So this episode is going to be all giving you an update of what we have done around the farm garden and what produce we've put in the ground. started cleaning up around the farm. Tom started a pile of sticks and trees and things while we were cleaning up and it was going to be Amelia's birthday pile. So today we are lighting it. Yeah. afternoon I have been ringing around getting quotes for fencing because our next step is to get the fences set up on this place so we can have some animals of course so what we actually need to do is our boundary fence in parts it's okay in parts it needs replacing but it needs to be electrified so we can have cattle so that needs to happen and then we also need to set up laneways in on the property so we can have small laneways with poly wires that are moved every day so we move the cattle every day because we're regenerative farming and rotational grazing so they intensively eat out a space a very small space we move them on the next day and by the time they come back to that space they've been around the whole farm and it's grown back and it looks after the soil it looks after the grasses and helps to encourage regeneration of the the grasses that we want, um, less of what we don't want, and you know the chooks scratch around behind them, so it's all just going to work in really well together. And you know it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to set this up properly and um, do this rotational grazing. It's easier if we could just throw the cows out there in the one big paddock, but it's not looking after the land, and those weeds would just keep coming back, and that's when you know conventionally farmers would reach for the sprays and things which we don't want to do so it's going to take more effort initially but once we get this set up it's super exciting to watch this unfold this little movable very temporary movable chook pen is working really well at the moment so i'm giving them the food scraps every day moving them pulling them along they've been just been walking uh, moving in around the fruit trees and that is sort of pushing down the grass and the weeds and um, then I move them on and whatever they don't eat with the food scraps I'll just pick up and put into the compost the next day and anything that I know they're not going to eat like a thing of broccoli stem and put it into the compost before I feed them the scraps. So yeah, of course they'd rather be fully running around but I no longer have the chupu at my back doorstep which is so much nicer and they're also fertilizing in around these fruit trees because we'll be putting veggies and um, herbs and things in there eventually <laughs> And 
it's a day in the garden today. We have finally got our fruit trees. I've got a few over there ready to go in the ground. We've waited and today's the day. And luckily when I went to get them yesterday, because we'd waited, they were on sale. So even better. But I've just reorganized our veggie patch. We had bits and pieces everywhere, some in pots, some over there. Now I've put the rhubarb together with the beans and the strawberries. Um, got a little bit of a pot happening there with some strawberries and put some thyme there as a companion plant. And these fruit trees are gonna go out next to the old ones. So we'll put some out here. Um, so just really looking forward to getting this food in the ground. have been dug so now I am going to put a little bit of sea mungus pellets in the bottom with some with some of the soil and um, mix that up and then we're going to put in the trees backfill it with 50 50 compost and the soil that's already there then we're going to water in with the sea mungus liquid has a tonic some companion herbs for going around our fruit trees and so the, these work in the way that they help to repel pests and attract the beautiful bees that we want and also you know control the, the weeds underneath because they crowd out naturally what we don't want and um, give much more of what we do want. I have been out here Working out where all these companion plants are going to go depending on the type of fruit tree. We've got some garlic chives under the apple. We're going to have a comfrey under another apple. We've got some thyme, nasturtiums, Roman chamomile, German chamomile, and lots of calendula. So what I'm planning on doing is see up here, up the middle, I want to have a pathway and calendula's lining that and then just eventually keep planting lots of different herbs under and around here and i've got to get some cardboard and mulch to keep the weeds down and hopefully long term that will help the herbs flourish and the trees flourish keep the the weeds or the, the grass out just got them in just before sunset and it's about to rain and Elkie keeps pulling them out as I go so I'm trying to keep her from doing that but huh, that's it for now that's it for today we're knocking off and we're back for more today so I have gone into town and went into a local fruit and veg shop and butcher and got some cardboard boxes and hopefully have enough. I'm just going to take the sticky off of them. They're flattened and that's going to be underneath the fruit trees. If I've got enough, it'll be the whole area here that's all um, scraped off. And then on top, the precious wood chips. And that is going to be our mulch to keep 
the weeds down, but just to nourish the underlay of the fruit trees and let those herbs grow as well and not, um, you know, have weeds to compete with or grasses to compete with. <laughs> got this delivered thanks Abby almost done for under the trees and then the pathways will be next um, Tom's taking the girls he's been doing other things with them which has been really nice to have this time and exercise and also it's just been therapeutic just to have some alone time so I've really enjoyed it and I'll finish off tomorrow now So excited we are finally getting our tank up big big tank and enough water for our garden the fruit trees the veggies the actual garden the lawn we can use the border for so that'll be okay but it'll just be so good to have enough for all of that and of course for our house and not run out like we did last summer And the good news is it's meant to be raining for the next three days drizzling but hopefully we can get some water in the bottom of that big tank of ours because we've been getting a bit worried it was showing to be like spring weather so this is good news for us and it's august do you remember what's happening in august yes i've just booked the ferry to go back to kangaroo island to my family farm my dad has adam's eggs over there which is a chook farm and cattle farm and he has gifted us around 20 chooks so we're gonna bring those back tom's gonna to get busy right now to build that chook tractor that we're gonna move around the farm and they're gonna pick around and scratch the grass and eventually as i said before go behind the cows that we will get and we're gonna have an abundance of eggs so we're gonna enjoy them ourselves of course but then going to set up the girls with a little honesty box at the front of the farm and show them how to run their own little business. So that's what we're excited for this next month and I cannot wait to take you along for the journey.